It's now six o'clock, um, the October 17th, and I'm um, going to call to order the regular select board meeting. Um, first item is to approve minutes from from a few things. Uh, first is regular select board meeting last time, which was October 3rd. We have minutes. Uh, yeah, let's do that one. Should we, unless... We could do them all as one go, or do they may have any comments, anyone? I was in that couple of meetings, so. So you don't have a lot of the comments? No. And I can't really vote for the minutes because I don't have a clear. You're going to abstain because you don't know what happened. You weren't there. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, well, let's do them as a. You missed a good time. So. <laughs> all right, so let's do them as a slate. So we have the regular select board. Minutes from regular select board meeting of October 3rd. Minutes from the town plan public hearing, October 7th. Minutes of a special select board meeting, October 7th. Um, so. And then the 16th. And to add the special meeting of October 16th. And the special meeting of October 16th as well. Right. Then that we had by email right. already. Yep. Yeah. Right, I read. Okay. So, as a whole slate, could we, did somebody so want moved. to move to Second. accept them? All right. So, any discussion, changes, or amendments to the minutes? I didn't see anything. I think they were good. Thank you. So, all in favor of approving the minutes as written, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And we have one abstention over here from the person who abstains <laughs> for lack of knowledge. Right? For lack of pers first hand. I could vote on the regular meeting. Yeah. 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 You a partial vote? Yeah. <laughs> partial. <laughs> a one quarter vote? 25%. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next up is set adjust agenda. Do we have to add, subtract anything on this thing? Nobody has anything? Mm -mm. All right. Let's roll with the agenda we have. Communication from the audience. We don't, uh, everybody's here for a reason. Hi, Doug. Um, so, uh, all right. Next is town manager report given by Sean Fielder. Okay, so we did uh, we did finalize the uh, water sewer uh, rate schedule for the current operations period, and uh, that that uh, has been uh, provided with the bills that the clerk's office just recently released. And uh, I would call everybody's attention to, uh, in that item as well, we, we have developed a frequently asked questions item. And uh, that information is, was included in the bills. And then also what we've done so folks can ask, access the information, it is up on the town's website as of now as well. So uh, quite a few folks involved with that process and uh, appreciate uh, their involvement. So I just want to say thank you. I got my bill and uh, like, I appreciate having those frequently asked questions in there. That's mm -hmm. good. Okay, good. Um, you know, we'll modify those as we go along and uh, just try to, you know, if we're getting, getting new or additional questions, try to have it. You know, if somebody's thinking that, there's more than one person that has that question most likely, so they you know, want to make sure folks are informed. Mm -hmm. So that's the objective. Uh, we had recently worked with the vast official. I say we, it's uh, Eric and I were actually involved. Uh, Eric mentioned this in a previous meeting on the uh, LVRT Bridge 38 and 40. Uh, we do have a um, uh, contractor selected for redecking and railing of Bridge 38 and 40. And, uh, VAST is in charge of setting up the contract. We saw a draft uh, today, actually, and they'll probably have a contract in place this next week with uh, Blow and Cody is the contractor that was selected. And uh, the information is that um, the contract specifies or will specify work to be completed by June of 2020. Uh, we anticipate some work on this um, late fall, and obviously it just depends on the severity of winter, if they'll be able to do anything through the winter season. So, um, Did the, those, I didn't see the results of those come in somewhere near where we'd hoped. Yeah, they were within, um, they were, it was a little bit above what our design engineers had specified, but it was within the parameters of uh, the broader uh, project funding, uh, which is an NBRC grant as well, Northern Border Regional Commission. So, uh, with the pricing we've had on our design and the pricing we're seeing for the uh, quote on the work, the job will be completed within the parameters we anticipated on the cost. So that's that's good news. Meaning that we had a 
it's a roughly, I think it's a $200,000 NBRC grant. They required a $50,000 match. Yep. So we, it's looking like for 250, we're going to have, we'll get both the design and the construction in, in that amount. Oh, okay. And, um, and the other thing that was kind of nice about the bids, even though they were higher than the design engineers had guessed, they were all really close to each other. So, yep. so it gave some confidence that these are all pretty, they're probably all pretty real numbers. Everybody sat and they were pretty exact to um, dollar figures. Um, uh, have been working on various details associated with the uh, Yellow Burn project and uh, the um, that this was announced in the previous hearing meeting, but uh, note it now, the uh, a pretty significant milestone, the town did officially acquire the uh, property uh, yesterday. So that milestone is complete. Closing occurred yesterday. Um, we're obviously continued work with the planning team. Uh, that's involving various agencies as well as uh, town employees and folks in my office. And um, next steps are grants with Economic Development Authority, Vermont Economic Development Authority, and Vermont Community Development Program. All applications due by early November, so we've got a lot that's going to be occurring in this next couple week period uh, to a advance the project. Um, for everybody you can see kind of in the background here um, that we've got a couple of the icons up. Um, uh, you know about the lay of the land if you will and um, I think what we will have uh, I'm anticipating that um, we'll have the executive summary available as a reference item so that would be posted if anybody had any questions they could go see the reference item on the elbow and burn project itself uh, there is work behind the scenes now to have a dedicated website but that's not quite ready to go at this phase so uh, shifting gears, uh, did have a meeting in the manager's office with uh, Tom, uh, Ken LaCasse, and Casey looking over our water and wastewater capital projects. And then, um, uh, so what we're trying to do on that is just look three to five to 10 years out as far as what we have coming at us, what our needs are for our water and wastewater system. Immediately following uh, the check-in meeting with our engineers, uh, Aldrich and Elliot with Wayne Elliott, uh, principal partner for the firm. And uh, what we're doing is just really trying to, um, we're trying to continue the approach the town's had for many years, which is to be ahead of it on the capital planning. So we're just continuing that process. So we're at a phase now where we get a, we're just reviewing our sequencing and uh, just trying to get some of the priorities in order and then match that up with, okay, do we have the capital funds available or do we need to bond? You know, these are some of the things that we'll be getting into this next three to six month period. Um, just thinking about water planning, um, we keep talking about taking a walk up to those springs off of Reno Road. Yep. Um, so that'll be on, that's definitely on the task list, yeah. action item list, moving yeah. forward. Tom, have you been up there? You know what those? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So you're familiar. Yep. Good. Yeah. Good. I think there's one of them that bothered me and John about those. I mean, they're still in use. Yeah. The people yeah. at the bottom of the road are still using those springs, but they actually wanted us to sort of like drill down into one of them. So we didn't know whether if we drilled down into one of those springs, we might lose you know, part of the water. So that was kind of hesitant on that part. But yeah, the water source that we can explore anyway. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so it's yeah. 20. <clears throat> I think there's 20 springs up there that all feed into one. It's a lot of springs. Yeah. <laughs> so we have had, uh, we have progress continuing on the Bridgman roof uh, project and um, uh, a really positive thing is the um, Spates Construction with their one of their subs actually got all the main girder beams hung this week so those main oh, girders wow. are in place for the roof and uh, the next phase would be uh, the sheets if you will so the main point here is um, they're on target with their schedule at this phase and uh, you know we've had Tom's been involved with this of course and we have regular communications ongoing with A&E um, Spates, uh, the state of Vermont, and some of their subcontractors. So we're looking really good at this phase is the important thing to note here. Did the floor get refinished? Uh, yeah. No, but and it's still... That's being evaluated as part of this. So that's, yeah. it's in the queue. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
Um, in case somebody's wondering what the question was, there were a few spots that were discovered in the floor that, for lack of a better phrase, are punky. And um, for a reservoir from 1940, it's not unanticipated. So the the expert of concrete uh, for A&E uh, wasn't too concerned, but obviously now's the time for us to make that adjustment and make that repair. So uh, we'll be in good shape with that. Uh, you know, we're going to have effectively a brand new reservoir uh, when we get this thing buttoned up, which at this phase is anticipated for the first part of December. Uh, if everything holds, we'd be back online by you know, December time. So that would be good. Thanks. Um, Last meeting, we talked a little bit about the animal control officer position, and um, the, the good news to report there is uh, I have talked to John Lange. He is uh, able to continue to serve in the role. We had some communication issues that were going on there for a couple week period. So uh, uh, he is going to provide service uh, through the end of October at a minimum. Um, I didn't get a chance to nail this down with the clerk's office, but uh, he is in a position this next week to uh, issue the dog warrants that we have, so I wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that. And I'll uh, keep the communications going with the clerk's office so we get that taken care of. Good. Um, did take part in the traffic task force meeting, traffic safety, pedestrian safety. I think I may not have the title of the task force accurate, but um, those meetings are ongoing. Uh, most recently, uh, Wiz and Sherry are involved with those. And uh, most recently, uh, Doug Morton joined us from NVDA. So uh, my perspective is, you know, the focus at this phase is obtaining feedback from various stakeholders. And in this instance, it's the downtown village uh, business owners, just some of their feedback about concerns, what works, what doesn't. So the group's uh, doing a good job of involving those folks and just getting the, you know, some feedback from on the ground, if you will. And um, also reviewing information from previous studies on the subject, which includes one from local motion and the, the uh, larger one, if you will, the more thorough was from uh, NVDA from about 10 years back. So we're, uh, you know, we're looking and updating and uh, more to come from the task force as far as visions and suggestions that would then be presented to the select board. Hopefully I don't get out of line speaking on behalf of the task force. I'm just, that's, that's, those are the, that's the perspective. Um, I did have one uh, trash complaint issue that we had to deal with here earlier this week and just would note the proper owner, property, owner, uh, property owner excuse me, dealt with it in a timely fashion. Um, we, uh, the previous meeting, the select board had uh, advised that we want to get the uh, Carrier Road property, um, which is the, uh, it's the settlement for the estate of the Patton family, buttoned up by uh, October 19th. And um, it looks like we're on target to see the personal possessions off the property by that timeline. So I'm keeping close contact with the estate uh, probate assigned estate attorney on that. And we saw some pretty significant movement or removal of items this past weekend. We do have liability and forms in place and are uh, you know, protecting the town's interest as a part of these processes. So uh, Tom and I talked about this a little bit today. Once we get to this phase where we know the personal possessions are out, then we'll take immediate steps to uh, uh, continue to clean up the property, if you will, coming into the winter season. So I think we're in a pretty good position. Hopefully we'll see some, uh, you know, we'll see the next phase here pretty quickly. If Danny were here, I'd ask about the trail of that. But yeah, and uh, I didn't necessarily note that here, but uh, you know, obviously, if we get this buttoned up in this next week, and you know, if there's anything else we need to move, then we can talk about if we want to do a reorientation on the trail, and I think that would be in our hands. Yeah, exactly, and I don't think it's a huge reorientation. No, there's right? just one larger no. tractor trailer body that's left. I don't think the back end of the thing have to be take take down and just turn, and I think it'd be a pretty well straight shot from there. Yeah. So take, it wouldn't take make the those two 90 degree jogs. Right. right. Okay. Be a sweep and turn, if you right. will, I think. Nice. So, so we right. could move the barricade we have there where the, where the actual yeah. road actually goes into the property, and that could be a straight shot right up to the trail. Oh. So it really wouldn't be any work at all, really. Oh. So we just have to stake it out and just take down that back fence, and I think that'd be the end of it. Then they could run it for the winter. And that could potentially be done before winter? Yeah. Huh. If we are down down there, we've got to clean up the garbage. I mean, it'll only take a minute, probably just take down that fence. So hmm. Tom said he'd pick it up all by hand. Okay, perfect. 
So uh, the last thing I want to report on is um, the uh, um, this came up in a previous meeting that we had to do the state um, mandated uh, PFOS P4 uh, uh, testing on our source, and uh, the the good news there is we have done our testing for it's 18 different uh, constituents that are the uh, categories that come are the the, the chemical. Uh, items you would be looking for under the category of the PFOS, PFOA uh, contaminant list. The state, uh, by executive order, made a, a significant change on a maximum contaminant level, which means it's a health enforceable standard if you exceed a certain value. Uh, the important thing for uh, the customers to know is that for these 18 chemicals, every one of them was a no detect from the hardware public water supply so it really it, it's illustrating for this particular contaminant it's a really good product at the source and again for this particular contaminant so Great. this is one of these items that the state is reporting results up to an area and we'll get it up on the website we just haven't had an opportunity yet um, so folks are aware we have taken you know, care of this done our diligence and the results are um, the best result you could get so Great. just so everybody's aware that's all i have will those res ultimately do those results also end up in our an the annual yeah. um water quality testing results that come in the bills yeah that's okay. correct so um and when we when go to our uh, consumer later. conference report is yeah. due uh, i sorry i've lost track mark uh, i think uh, i want to say may yeah one but i might be off by a month so we would actually we would definitely be reporting that, that comes but out. we'll note it um, in advance you know yeah. we don't want to wait you know if we have an issue we're going to report it right away i want to be clear about this if yeah. there's something that's a health issue um sorry to bring this up but as an example when we had our boil water notice i mean that's immediate because there's an acute an acute health potential problem we're going to notify right away something where you have a no detect you're not necessarily obligated to report that but it's important for people to know we don't have a problem we've done our diligence that's just as important you know to notify folks yeah. so it will be in the consumer conference report as well next next, next spring yep that's Great. How answer that one. thank you Yep. All right, next up is the road foreman report. So, Tom, tell us tell us what your crew has been up to. <laughs> Dealing with that thing on Glenside. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but we did finally manage to get it un unplugged. So give a little description for those who haven't been following along at home. Uh, catch basin from hell. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's the title. Yes. Uh, so this started like a week ago. After we had a good heavy heavy rain, uh, part way up on one side from the intersection section from the bottom, the pipe, the old clay pipe blew apart. So water was coming out of the ground there, then down below, and just so oh, probably another 25, 30 feet down below, the water was boiling out of the road there. So we knew we had two problems there. So we ended up digging it out and tried jetting it. Well, we couldn't get it with, with our jetter. So we finally got a hold of Minosh. Minosh came up, I think it was that Wednesday, and it was about four o'clock. We started trying to jet it from the top side. Couldn't get it. You can only go down like 50 feet. Then we went up from the riverside, we went up 182 feet. Pulled a jetter back, line back out. Rejetted again with a different nozzle. Got his line stuck. So then he asked me if we could start digging and I basically said, well, where do you want to dig? I have no idea where this line goes because our forefathers in 1920 probably laid this line. So we finally managed to get the backhoe down over the bank in towards the river so I can yank on a line. So we got that out. So by 7, 7.30 at night, I think we got it done. So then he said he was going to bring the camera up on Thursday. Couldn't do it because the camera wasn't working. So he brought it up Friday morning. We could only go up 82 feet with it because then we started getting a little bit of material in the pipe. So we decided to dig a test hole by haze there in that grassy area between the car wash and state highway. Well, when I did that, I figured, well, maybe we can locate it there. Well, I found a six inch water main that feeds out the little uh, hydrant, then I found a one inch water main that feeds the car wash. So Neither one of those is your storm drain. No, so we buried that all back <laughs> up. So over the, over the weekend and holiday, then said, well, we only got one other choice left put another speed bump in the bottom of uh, Glenside. So that's what we ended up doing. So we dug that up Monday, and I think by what, one o'clock? 
I think 1 30 in the yeah. afternoon yeah we finally just got because it. I showed up yeah just because Sean showed up and said, the dang it, this thing's gonna let loose <laughs> so it did let loose so we <laughs> finally got that so we buried it that night then the next day we went back laid some brand new cover up and then I had a catch basin over at the town garage all we had to do was just kind of bore another hole into it so we got that set in place got the other line into it and so far so good it's been working and the, it does not have a cover on it but we do got cones around it and everything else uh, the cover should be done I ordered one today should be done tomorrow so hopefully by the early morning I can put a cover on it with a catch basin top to it so we can still access it so yeah <laughs> Bear in mind, the story. line best estimate is the line goes under the gas tanks. So it's one of those things it's, where you can't just dig. It's crazy because it looks like the line heads off towards the middle of the car wash. But the outlet to it is actually behind the garage. And when we go up through it, it goes up through and then you can see it turning back towards the car wash way. So we don't know where it dips down or turns this way or that way. We just <laughs> no idea. But that's probably one of the things that we should probably plan on here in the future because where we were jetting on top, that culvert does not look too good down inside. So, but it is flowing, it's working. We won't have a skate ring hopefully this winter. So, <laughs> as long as it keeps going. Ultimately, next time we're thinking about stormwater runoff improvements, yes. that should rise higher on the list. Yeah, and and it would be if we just run a brand new yeah line somehow and probably do some sort of a settlement thing or something. Yeah, because the only thing I could think of is well, the shortest route would probably be running it over towards the village motel because the state has a I think it's an 18 inch or two foot culvert that runs you know in where the old ponds used to be yeah right there that runs towards the river itself because if not then we're gonna have to run it down the side of the road go through uh, across from Hardwick Market there yeah to that one there but that catch basin there which we were thinking about going to that only has an eight inch pipe so and you might no overload way. it yeah there's no yeah. way that's gonna take that flow so you'd have to redo yeah. that catch basin yeah. to the bottom of that catch basin, then the one across the road, then the one that really leads out and back up part of the market. Mm. So, yeah, interesting but anyways, stuff. So yeah, <laughs> so so yeah, that's been fun. So, but the end of the time, well, well, me and a couple guys were doing that. The other guys have been out grading, hauling gravel and stuff, uh, trying to button up the roads for the winter and stuff. Uh, today, we we'll get all the tires changed on the trucks, or we've been in the process of doing doing that, getting that ready. The trucks are going out now for getting inspections and stuff like that on them. Are all the trucks running? <sighs> Yeah, sort of, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're, uh, Pearly's truck is still having a fit. Okay. It's wondering. We had Lloyd back up there today because it's just, and he's baffled by it too. Uh, so he wrote down a couple codes on it and stuff, and he's not sure he was going to go back and look at it and stuff. But yeah, that truck is becoming a nightmare. But anyway, so hopefully by next month I'll have prices on a new one to replace that so we can get that order and stuff. It's still, we won't buy it until the following fiscal year budget starts but we get it ordered but we get it ordered we get our slot put in yeah you know in july yeah. so yeah. because if we're right now still if we wait until at the town meeting to order the truck by the time the truck gets here we'll have to run his truck at least one, one, one more winter because we won't be in a slot until i think he said till the following year so tom it baffles me the business model that these guys work with. Is each one of these trucks custom built? Why does it take so long to get a truck? No, because it, it basically ended up more or less when the economy slowed. They had a stockpile of trucks, so they basically kind of got rid of the inventory, and then the economy started going back up, and everybody was ordering, and ordering, and ordering. There was no trucks available. So now they're trying to get ramped back up and get caught back up. The only one that I know right now who tells me they can get a truck, they're back to normal right now, is Freightliner. Uh, basically, it's not basically the trucks right now. It will be our position to be in a spot to get the body, the plow frame and all that put on. Because everybody right now is slotted. He's, he's got one spot open in June. 
and he's got two slots open right now in July for putting the body and plow frames on. So that is sort of custom work. It, it, well, sort of. Now, you know, the bodies come out of Canada, all the plow frames and all that stuff comes comes down from there. But the problem is, everybody's ordering their trucks right now, so they're, you know, they're taking up all those slots. So if we wait till July, if if we actually get our truck in July or August. All those slots are already filled all through the winter because there's guys that got their chassis this uh, I think middle part of the summer. They're not slated to get their bodies on until next April. So they're yeah. We don't want to be on that. Time right. Frame. It's just in time um, yeah. supply. It's so like a lot so of other it's, well, I'll give you an example. My new truck. That truck's been sent down there with the plow frame and everything ready to go, with no body on it for three months. Sounds like it's not quite just in time. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, supposedly I should have that truck at the beginning of November. Because supposedly that body is supposed to be at their shop in Williston by the end of this week. Yeah. Yeah, it's not just in, this whole thing is it's crazy the lead time. Yeah, uh, yeah I just I, and and they've got you. I mean, if you've got yeah. you've got only a couple you can get this from that that, that they sort of don't have to care right. how long it takes. Well, there are a few right that do bodies. There there is, but the body that we're running right now is the center feed bodies. Yeah. So there's no we yeah. ain't got to deal with the side dumps and yeah. those you know going bad and stuff. And uh, Viking is about one of the best best ones there is. Yeah. Uh, Pearly's truck, his his body is eight years old, and then he, that that it does not have a lick of rust on it. Wow. Their paint, the way they do it up in Canada, the way they bake it and stuff is is, is awesome. Uh, compared to Mike's truck, which is five years old, that thing. I mean, after the second year, I mean, it, the paint started peeling off and everything else from so, it. So, but. <laughs> But anyway, wow. besides that, we've done a few more meters, whether they've been in house, houses and stuff. And Ivan's done a couple water lines that he's installed oh, a couple of meters for us, too. Uh, but besides awesome. that, it's, I think that's about it. And sand is up, right? Sand, yep, sand's all done and up. And you have some spring stone stockpiled? Or? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's all ready to go for mud season. Hopefully there isn't one. Yeah. Well, hopefully. Got some, uh, <laughs> some brushwork plans too. Oh yes, yes, yeah. Thanks, Sean. Uh, I, uh, we do got a brush cutting crew coming in, to do some roadside mowing. Uh, they're actually going to start and do uh, Macville out through Nichols all the way out to Dutton. Oh really? Road. Yeah, because that's that's getting pretty good canopy in there. So they're going to go out as far as they can go and up 12 feet. So they're going to do that, and then I save a little extra money because you know we get a little bit of weather here. We're going to run a chipper so we can buzz around the village. And, do some cutting and chipping around here, so. Huh, good. So, we'll go from there. And the crew got a lot accomplished this summer construction season, particularly with how wet it was on the front, so nice job to the highway. Yeah, the guys did a great job this got year. A lot, a, lot of, a lot of ditch work and stuff. I think the way we split it up with me and the grader and the other guys in the trucks and the ditching and, you know, getting the other guys going on the water meter pits and stuff. We, that was good, yeah. division of labor. Yeah. Great. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, for the police department report, we're going to move over that. Yeah. Well, I got a few points. Just oh. a couple bullet points okay. to come off from on behalf of the chief. Yep. Uh, he's sorry. He had a yeah, personal uh, yep. uh, conflict for this evening, but Aaron just asked me to pass along. Uh, uh, they do have uh, some, they had a, the radio, the main radio, um, they have uh, got a uh, determination from Burlington Communications, uh, the base station is not repairable, and they're uh, working on getting that replaced. Cost estimate is around $1,500. Uh, they do have a loaner, so I mean they got an operating system right now and um, Going to be looking at the issue of replacement coming into the budgeting uh, talks mm -hmm. so uh, repeater and antenna uh, were repairable and uh, Back to functioning right now. Uh, okay, so it's the base uh, the new cruiser the update on that is it's funny We just talked about the truck no word on the new cruiser as of yet um, He has been uh, steadily checking in with the Mo Valley Ford um, I guess the way this works is when Lamoille Valley Ford knows there's a vehicle, it's so it is a Ford, obviously. Then we'll get a report that okay, the VIN number and you know the car is born, if you will. <laughs> so nothing on that as of yet, which it's interesting. I think it's similar to what Tom was just talking about. It's a 2020. You would think by now they'd have a 2020, but it's a specialty order item. So 
So that uh, and we're the only police department in the world that buys it. I'm sure of it. I'm pretty sure of that. Yep. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. So I guess the good news is we aren't waiting for a GM product. I mean, they're hopefully going to have their issue resolved, but I think we'd be in a lot worse place yeah. if we had a GM product. Nothing against the product, but with the strike, it would be an issue. Uh, he asked to also share that uh, for Halloween uh, department um, uh, coverage as normal uh, would anticipate closing some of the village streets as has been done previously uh, for a short amount of time uh, for the trick-or-treaters and then allowing uh, just the local traffic um, to travel uh, as needed. So those are a couple items from the chief. Great. Thank you. Um, all right. We're to item number one, which is New England Municipal Consultants uh, Assessor to present corrections needed to a couple of tax bills. So, so to tell you the truth, we just have one. Um, I'll start by introducing myself. Some of you who don't know me, my name is Matthew Krajewski, represent New England Municipal Consultants, ultimately your assessor's office, contract assessor's office. Um, the point uh, which has brought me here this evening, um, we have an errors and omissions to the grand list that we need to present to you. It is a utility value. It's Green Mountain Power. It is basically the uh, telephone poles and the wires that encompass your community here. Um, just to give you a little bit of background utility values are sent to us by the utility companies themselves in terms of using a state formula to develop excuse me to develop that value um, the issue is here in terms of the paperwork that they've sent us for this year they've changed the format so the 2017 and 2018 columns were reversed for this year so the current value the assessment that we have on the parcel is the 2017 number and not the 2018 number in terms of uh, what, what we needed to have it as and to, for the grand list 2019. So basically what we are ultimately asking from you is um, to correct the value to um, Currently, it's $246,400. Um, what we are proposing is the corrected $267,500 is what it needs to be. And again, the paperwork is submitted to us through the utility company. So basically, we're just asking your permission here to go ahead and to make that change. Legally, we do have to send them a change of appraisal notice um, by law. Um, in, in the other communities that we service, typically, what we'll do is we will certainly mail that out and we will reach out to the utility company to at least make them aware of this typically they understand that okay this is the the value that we had submitted to you so we don't necessarily see the need to move forward with an appeal but certainly that is their right so um, in terms of us getting out in front of it I do have a document here with your approval I have some additional copies just for you to review here and keep that one just for the record here Thanks. So ultimately, we are asking uh, just for that change so we can amend the grand list 2019. Why does Green Mountain Power have utility poles in Hardwick? Isn't it Hardwick Electric? Or am I just, is that dumb? They may have transmission lines. I see. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The big line that goes down through Macville, is that? I see. Yeah, it could be. I don't really know. No, they can't have software technically listed as Route 15, but it's, it's technically various. It's scattered throughout the community in terms of the, the poles and wires that they physically own. Um, so again, that's that's the value that they submit to your community right there. And again, the, it's an issue with just that the two columns from year to year uh, had basically gotten reversed and that, that older value had been implemented for this year incorrectly. Yeah, I get that part. I just thought everything was Hardwick Electric in this well, Washington Electric actually comes over into oh, um, really? yeah, um, over by Nichols Pond, but it comes into Hardwick huh. from that way. And um, so, I, do you know which Tom? Yeah, Washington Electric goes from there out through what you were saying, out through Nichols, out through that way. Green Mountain Power goes from the plant out through 115, out towards Morrisville, out from the huh. plant. That's yeah. the transmission line. Yep. goes through. Yeah, it goes right. Yeah, through. Does it go through your place or it goes across the road? Across the road, place yeah. And then down. Yeah, through Macville. So that's all Green Mountain Power no. transmission. No, Washington Electric. That's Washington. They kind of switch right there at the substation there, right, right at the uh, light light department, oh. right there. So Green Mountain feeds in one way and Washington Electric the other way. Oh. So they kind of switch right there. There we go. The more curious thing for me is that the power company gets to tell you what their tax assessment is. 
Um, What's the story on that? I'm sure that's out of statute. So that that's done statewide through a formula that the state of Vermont has created, certainly. Um, what part of the state of Vermont? And what uh, portion of state government? It would be the correct. It would be the Public Utility Commission. And I, I believe, I, I can't necessarily tell you the year that that formula was created. Um, it, it, it was created some time ago, certainly, in terms of, of they've... they've um, it's tough for me to speak on. We work in many communities, so I know certainly in one of our other communities, we're actually uh, challenging the values in the other community um, based on a, a, a specialized appraisal in terms of the town and commission, the, a private appraiser to do this. We don't see it typically challenged at all. It's something that, um, it, it can be very complicated in terms of the value with something like that, but this is, this is typically done statewide in terms of just implementing ultimately what they send to you. In a way, it's interesting that we're, we even tax poles and wires the same way we tax real estate, right? I mean, it's like more equipment it's, than real estate. Yeah, but it's if it's more like a house than it is right. a tractor. Spo right. Well, it's, you know, it's yeah. planted. Yeah. <laughs> it's, not, yeah. it's more it's like a tree. Yeah. To a degree, it's like personal property. It's almost like, in, in this case anyways, with yeah. poles and wires, you're almost looking at it like a personal property tax. There's that's no the acreage that's involved with this. Person. Yeah, we're sure. There's a difference of opinion on that. <laughs> not anymore. So do you need a motion? <laughs> yeah, apparently not. All right. To increase it $21,000. To, 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 to approve the errors and omissions request? Errors and omissions request. Yeah. Well, we do need a motion. So I'll make that motion that we um, go ahead and approve the errors and omissions request. Second. Anybody have any more questions for Matthew? Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's everybody. Um, thank you very much for no. bringing this to us. The other thing I'll mention to you, um, just in terms of our assessor's office downstairs, certainly, um, we, we as the assessors um, are responsible for two half days per month in terms of staffing the office. What we've come up with is every first and third Wednesday of the month from 8.30 to 12.30 is when we will be personally staffing the office from the assessor side. I have been in communication with the town listers who are also assess, um, assisting, I should say, with the process. And um, they're, they're kind of in their own process of just finiting their own hours. But in terms of getting something up on the website, we'll continue to work with Sean's office, with Casey, in terms of getting up. And we just, we want to create more transparency, certainly for the community, that if they're looking for any sort of um, dialogue or uh, correspondence from our office, certainly we want those set hours to uh, certainly be transparent. So that's the other point that I'll just make while I'm here, certainly. And how has that been, and just generally, how has it been working to have some office hours? Are, are community members utilizing those office hours at all, or are you just doing your work while you're here? And Yeah, I would say we get, in a community like this, we get very little foot traffic that actually comes through the door. Now, that may be uh, partially responsible um, in terms of just our, we don't have those set hours certainly posted currently. So this is why going forward, we do want to post those hours so if anybody is confused about when can I actually speak with the assessor typically most of the communication the correspondence is coming through email or through telephone um, typically through the clerk's office we get the majority of the address changes certainly the property transfers um, building permits are going to be submitted to us through Kristen that we certainly work hand in hand with in the same office in there so your community we so far anyways we've seen very little foot traffic and more either telephone correspondence Correspondence or email correspondence. Cool. Good to know. Matt, you said first and third Wednesday from 8.30 to 12.30? Correct. Okay. Every first and third Wednesday of the month is when we, the assessors, will certainly be responsible for staffing okay. the office. And we're still working on listers. Um, when their set hours are going to be? Correct. I've, I've spoken with them, and I don't want to necessarily speak for them here at this meeting here tonight. It sounds like Tuesday is kind of part of their plan anyways, if they do uh, more of a morning there. I know certainly there are busier times of year where if we can kind of uh, uh, bank some of those hours, because certainly we want to be cautious about this is what we have budgeted, this is certainly you know the resources that we have to work with. So I know that there's been some talk about a Tuesday. Um, they've also expressed interest, and certainly we're on board with
this to uh, meet with us at least once a month to just discuss, okay, what is going on? What have you done? What have we seen so far? So just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Um, so I, I, what they had expressed to me was maybe that second Wednesday that we do, technically the third Wednesday of every month, they would look to potentially meet with somebody like myself anyways and just to go over, this is what we've dealt with so far. These are some concerns that we may have uh, going forward. This is what needs to be addressed, that type of thing. So in addition to your walk-in hours, you are available by phone and email. Correct. Other regular business hours. Well. Correct. And if anybody makes a, a specific inquiry and they need us certainly to uh, be available to meet, I mean, certainly we would get back to them in a timely fashion. And uh, hopefully we could make it work on a day when we typically staff the office. But uh, once again, there, there are busier times of year. So I know certainly when we're looking at new construction or building permits or we're getting in the process of collecting our data for a grand list in any given year, we're certainly going to um, make ourselves more available. There's going to be more hours around those times just to make sure. I think I think this year roughly there were about 90 property checks that we ended up doing. I think they ended up with two grievances. So um, in, ter in terms of how many checks we did versus how many appeals that we had, it was uh, we certainly we were happy with it. We'll say that. So overall, from your perspective, things are going well, well enough. I would say they're going pretty well. Your community is, uh, uh, we, we, I'll say that we, we work in larger communities where certainly we do see it traffic more often. I would say that in terms of the size of your community, it's pretty on par with what we typically see of a community this size, just in terms of uh, people reaching out, wanting questions answered, um, that type of thing. So I, I do believe it's going well so far. Eric, could you sign one for that? Oh, oh, perfect. Oh. Yep, I'll take that one back from you. And would you like a copy of the, the signed one, just for your records? Or you just want to... Okay. Thank you. Perfect. And I thank you all for your time tonight. Yeah, thank you for coming. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. Safe all right. Home, all right. Thank, thank you. It. Yep. yep. Take care. All right. Next is item two, select board to discuss VCDP grant for the Yellow Barn Project and resolve to apply, which I should probably know about, but... Um, so we have to. Uh, it's procedural. It's this. Procedural. Yes. Yeah. We already did this. Sorry, the select board already did this, but it's a timing issue. Where, um, right. It's a document just saying that um, you want to apply for the grant and that you have. We have a municipal plan. Um, oh, but it needs. We will have a municipal plan. Yes. Yep, this document says that we have a plan from 2014 and it has a proposed plan right. scheduled for adoption after we have another public hearing. Great. And that Sean is authorized to be the contact person um, and designated to serve as the authorizing official for like the online grant portion of it to do the application online. This document right here. Yeah, I found it. Good. So you want a motion to um, uh, to to adopt proceed. this resolution, Eric? I, I think we're. I don't know that we said this is for the Yellow Barn Project. We yeah, just talked oh, about sorry. it in the previous hearing. Well, we did. I think I did. Um, did you I read it? Okay, yeah. no, Thank you. CDP grant for the Thank Yellow you. Barn Project. Yep. Sorry. A move that we uh, resolve to apply and put John in charge of taking care of that. <laughs> All right. Second. Any discussion on the resolution or the intent or anything like that? Here, we can explain a little bit more. What is sure? How much is it for? And oh yeah. Payback, or is there payback or matching yeah. the funds or anything? What's the? Yeah, yeah. So, great questions. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, uh, this application is to um, Vermont Community Development Program. So um, this is, we're um, applying, we're going before the, the board of the VCDP on November the 7th. Um, our application is for an, a million dollar grant. Um, and that is um, in part uh, going to be used to match um, if you know all things go to plan, a uh, three million dollar grant from EDA, the Federal Economic Development Authority. So um, it's very important. This is a very important piece of the funding because we need um, we need to 
that helps provide the match for another part, a very important part of the funding. Um, and uh, what else? So it's a grant entirely. Um, and so there's no, no matching town funds or anything like that that's for this particular grant. Right. So the match, the I would need Allison Lowe from NVDA to be completely to describe it completely, but. Um, we're, so the the major funding components are a three million dollar grant from EDA, the federal funding, um, a million dollar grant from BCBP, a two million dollar loan from um, VITA, Vermont Economic Development Authority. Uh, we discussed this in the um, the information session prior, but the because of the organizational structure that's needed for the new market tax credits to happen at the end, the VITA loan is actually be not being taken out by the town, it's being taken out by the Northeast Kingdom Development um, Corporation, which is associated with NVDA. NVDA and NCIC, right? Yeah. Okay. And St. James. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm sure swimming in alphabet right. soup right here. Um, okay. But those are the, our, our, our regional development corporation is heavily involved in this, and so it's the yeah. So those are the three major funding things, and the loan card is going through the any the Northeast Kingdom Development Corporation, and um, so this loan is obligating us to put down funds in. It's a grant. It's a particular grant. It's a grant. It's yeah. obligating us to. It, if we already get it, I'm just saying. Right, but if we get it, we're obligated, as far as my understanding is, if we get it, we're obligated to spend it on what we say we're going to spend it on. Okay. Uh, which, that's, that's the extent. The way it um, tends to be with grants. It, <laughs> supposed to spend them for right. what you get them for. Right, but we're not obligating so town funds with this, right? Right, that's, that's, that's pretty more sort of what I was saying. Okay, yeah. 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 And then the only, uh, yeah. So we're going, I mean, yeah. So we have, the only thing I'll just throw out there just because it does give me, makes me I, thinking about it is that um, we only have 15 minutes to make our pitch to the board on November 7th. And um, it's pretty tight. But what we've been doing in the lead up is um, we've been meeting, um, we have uh, Christy Farnham from the Agency of Commerce and Community Development has been helping us uh, with a lot of things, but she's um, been helping us prepare for this uh, presentation to their board. Um, Nathan Cleveland, who's the, like kind of, I don't know what his title is, but he's sort of shepherd of that program. He's effectively the executive assistant, is how you would probably frame it. Okay. I mean, it's and he, um, so we've actually done a mock run of our presentation with him and a few others from the agency to get their feedback to try to make it the best pitch you can make in 15 minutes, which really you can't even make it, you don't even have that long, you want to answer their questions. So you need to get up, say something very quickly, and then answer their questions and hope that your application that you've submitted has provided all the detail that they need. And that all your back behind the scenes workings have made it so that everybody else at the state, all the state employees who communicate with this board, that they're able to answer the board's questions too because there, um, there is a prior discussion before we present and then there's a deliberation afterwards. And so we, we, our goal is that everybody is, when we're only there 15 minutes, so our goal is that everybody else is fully informed too. And this goes. Okay. So. 15 minutes for a million dollars. <laughs> yeah. Well, 15 minutes, yeah, with, with a two-year with a two year build up. Yes, exactly, or three or whatever, yeah. Point in the whole thing. Exactly. So, that's Motion the scoop. On the floor. Motion's on the floor. So, um, any other questions about it? So, all in favor of adopting the resolution for VCDP, VCDP grant application authority, please say aye. 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 All right. Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, thank you. That's great. Um, Here's the official one. 
I'll be able to tell you. I'll give you a debrief at our next meeting of how it went standing up in front of them. Yeah. Um, next is item number three, uh, AT&T slash Centerline. I believe Centerline is their consultant. Request to select board. Request, they're requesting select board clearance to proceed with an extension of utility services for communications tower along Buffalo Mountain Trail. Um, do you happen to be from? Yes, I do. From yeah. which? at and or Centerline? Or? So I'm from Centerline. Yep. And we're a consultant for at and Okay. Anyway, I that, right. You Jean. did. What do you mean? Janelle Smith. I'll give you my, yep. my contact information here to my card. So just kind of an overview of what we're going to be proposing. It's a 184 foot monopole on property owned by Teresa Bellavance. It's a 180 foot what? Monopole. A monopole. What is that? It's a cell tower. It's one pole as opposed to okay. so. a tripod or something. <laughs> right, or as opposed to a guide or self-support. So it's not a guide? Correct. Really? So you Oh, okay. Basically, so yes. It'll probably metal. It'll be galvanized steel. Yeah. Huh. yeah. So, okay. uh, so that's our proposal. The the permitting goes through the Public Utility Commission mm -hmm. uh, with an advance 60 day notice to the town and surrounding property owners and agencies within the state. So in doing our due diligence, we discovered that in order to get to the top of the mountain, where we propose to put the pole, we will need to have access through an existing logging road owned by Robert Patton, on property owned by Robert Patton. And to get to that property, we would need to use Buffalo Mountain Road, which is technically a trail. <laughs> So, um, we are doing an agreement with the Bellavances, and we're doing an easement agreement with the Patents, and in order to get utilities to the access route, um, in, actually in order to get access to the site, we would need to use Buffalo Mountain Road. So, that's why I'm here, I'm here to ask permission to propose that we use this trail in order to get access and utilities from the right of way to the patent's property in order to get up to the Bellavance's property. The utilities, does utilities imply um, planting poles and stringing wire? moment it would be pro it's proposed to be underground okay. due to the overhead branches it wouldn't make a lot of sense to put overhead wires up there okay. there might be a point where we would need to get um, to go from underground to overground to go over a small river that's existing there on Robert Patton's property we noticed there's a small um, stream of water so we might have to go above ground for a short period but then directly above below ground again um, that's and below, along, or under the trail as well? That is correct, yes, or alongside the trail, mm -hmm. uh, but technically it would be access and utility below ground along the trail mm. from the public right-of-way. Yeah. What kind of vehicles typically use that trail? So I believe that the so typical typical use is um, off-road vehicles, really. I mean, other than Robert Patton, but if you are you well, this is where I'm going with <laughs> this. What kind of vehicles are you going to be putting on that trail, and what kind of damage is it going to do? I mean, a trail is is sort of a shifty, sort of unstable. Uh, you expect it not to be very good, and if you're running big utility company vehicles up and down there, I can imagine a fair amount of wear and tear um, to the point where it may be really annoying to Mr. Patton. Uh, and who's responsible then for whatever cleanup has to be taken to that trail after your trucks have been there? 
one is about construction. So in order to construct the tower, we would need to bring a crane up there. That would be a one-time access utility vehicle, essentially. How wide? What kind of movement does it have? Uh, it, we require 20 feet in order to construct and maintain. We, we generally will ask for a 20-foot wide access. Um, that gives us the room to put a crane up the trail. Does that trail have a 20-foot wide access? It, it, it looks to be about 20 feet now. Uh, it's actually a pretty well-maintained um, access road from the right-of-way to Robert Patton's property. In fact, when we first viewed it, we thought it was a regular right-of-way road. Um, it appears to be very well-maintained um, and wide. Uh, the impact to Robert Patton's property would be greater because it's an existing logging trail with not a lot of improvement. Mm -hmm. um, that is uh, that is an agreement that we're working out with Robert who wants to do business with us um, in order to help him get utilities, in fact, to his, his maple um, sugar plant there, or his, his, um, his building. It's being currently <laughs> operated on a generator, so. Question about that, where his maple sugar property is. It's on our property? Well, it's a, there, it's a little, there's a little, the, there's been a lot of talk about that. The trail has moved. There has yeah. been a lot of talk. Um, but yeah. I think what, what we, I think it's been a while since it's come up. We've had many discussions with Mr. Patton about that trail, and it's true that he's and he hasn't always been really it. easy to work with on it. Right, um, but I think we got to a point where we came to an agreement that, that where it, it is now is where it is. Where it is now is where it is. Yeah. yeah, exactly, and that it needs to remain open to all legal users of the trail. Mm -hmm. And I think that we agreed to that. At mm -hmm. least that was the kind of the end of the That's session I that I remember. Yeah. 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 So I think what I think what you're saying here is that you're going to get to David Patton's property on this access, but then you're yeah. going to get off the access and go across a long road right, just before a sugar house. Is that what you're doing? That's right. Just before a sugar house, there's a trail that goes over a small ravine, very small um, waterway, mm -hmm. and so that's where I was talking about where we might have to go above ground for a short period of time to bring utilities over the ri little river that's there. Yeah, yeah. Access a little stream, right? Um, and so, so our request to the town is to get from the main road up to Robert Patton's logging trail. Uh, it appears to be a town trail, so that's why we're requesting it. Right. Yes. So that's my question. question about the vehicles you'll need in order to complete this project. Right. So, so in order to build it, the crane, and then in order to maintain it, I would say approximately once a month, although it's less than that realistically now, uh, we would want to check up on the site or whoever owns the site. Um, we would want to make sure that it's running and uh, and up to par. It's realistically less than that, um, but once a month it would be like an SUV or an F-150. Yeah, it could be, like for instance, I when I do site visits, I use a Subaru Forester, so it's really standard kind of car to get up there. However, during the winter, I I will bet that just based on my knowledge of the area, um, we would have to use an ATV if there was an emergency down of the, of the equipment. So uh, we wouldn't routinely do that. We would only do it if it was necessary because the power went down, the equipment went down. And then just knowing how steep it is up there, I would, I would guess that it would be ATV access only after the sugar house on Robert's land. So as for the town trail, it appears to be, and I've been up there with my Subaru um, during the winter, and it's totally traversable on Buffalo Mountain Road with a decent all-wheel drive vehicle. Um, it would only be ATV on the private property. Okay, thank you. So I'm not familiar with where Teresa Bellavance's land is. Is that? Um, I looked for it in our tax maps and couldn't find it. So 
the address that we have on file is it's 283 Cooper Brook Drive. Yeah. So we could go up Cooper Brook Drive, but then there's no access from basically where Gary Balavance's home is up to the proposed site, which is a high point on the property, which is necessary to provide adequate coverage. So Robert offered that we could use his access, which is an existing logging road, which would be a much less impact on the environment. Fewer trees would be removed since it's already a logging trail that's been cleared. Um, so it just makes sense for us to use that road already cleared rather than having to clear an entire different road off of Cooper Brook Road. So Cooper Brook Road is a private road to Gary's house? Yeah. Okay. So this isn't at the very peak of the mountain. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's sort of on the same similar level as Patton's house, or actually, it's up pretty high mm -hmm. off of um, off of. It's up at the high point of the Bellavance property in order to provide adequate coverage. The higher up you go, the more coverage you provide. So yeah, so our goal is to get up as high as possible and. To get there, we want to impact the trees as little as possible. So going up the logging trail makes so much more sense than clearing an entire different road with having to cut down more trees. And the goal of this new tower, I thought AT&T was on the tower on um, Bridgman Hill. They are. So is this complementary, or is this is. getting off that one and moving to this one? There is no plan to get off of the Bridgman Hill uh, uh, tower. This is this is complementary. It's to provide increased capacity and in, and emergency services as well. So will this assist Route 14 from yes. Bridgman to East Montpelier? That is correct. Yes. Yep. Really? Yes. It can see down that way? It sees a pro, it'll see at 184 feet, or 180 foot rad center, um, it would see approximately seven miles. Even, even over the yeah, you go up the gulf and down over it's towards my house in Woodbury, please. It's, I know it's line of sight, so any nice. that's the that's the real challenge in Vermont yeah. is that everything is line of sight. So we have a lot of trees and we have a lot of hills. Uh, so yes, there will be coverage for for approximately seven miles, but it's not going to be great all the time, especially in the summertime when there's. Uh, full full leaves on the trees. Uh, it gets better when we have less foliage or less tr leaves on the trees. Is this part of the G5 rollout thing that I've been hearing about? There is a 5G component and a first net um, emergency services component as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what's the emergency services component? So because our local emergency services have to run their own radios, right? They do, and, and as part of this rollout, at and is offering room on all their towers um, now for local emergency services, and there's a federal mandate known as FirstNet, and first, all of at and at and won the bid for the FirstNet project throughout the United States, and uh, so all of at and new built towers will have this emergency component with availability to all emergency personnel uh, to have room on the tower. So that is an added benefit to uh, the AT&T towers going up now. We already have it. I know some responders already have it here in, in Hardwick. The, the first net pro the first net? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, that's very it, likely. Yeah. 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 It's been quite popular. It's already already available. It must be available off the current tower up here. See what it looks like yeah. on that page. No. I haven't seen this. No, I didn't say that. I mean, it was emailed out, but I read it printed, yeah. I, I didn't see it. If you like, I have a sort of preliminary um, set of zoning drawings here, and they are draft. <laughs> so uh, I'd be happy to hand them to you. This is the same document that was emailed previously. Oh, that, that's what I have. Oh, okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah. 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 It's I printed two for them. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. What am I looking for? So we'll be putting out a uh, application, initially a 60-day advance notice to the Public Utility Commission, mm -hmm. and Hardwick will get notice of that and have an opportunity to provide comment uh, at that time, um, and then we will get a CPG or a Certificate of Public Good through the Public Utility Commission. That's generally how we're getting these 
permit is through 248, section 248, um, through state permitting. Okay. So, so this is, okay. no, I'm just saying, it seems to me, this is the first time I've seen this, so we, we're, I mean, we can't really make a decision tonight or anything. I think we need to, uh, at least I would need to have some time to contemplate it. Do we have a process in place for this already? I don't know. So I, don't I believe, though, no, so to clarify, and I think Kristen, all we're being. Is Kristen involved in, as well? Well, Act 248, it's a state issue. Oh. So, if I'm not mistaken, so we're not talking about the tower itself. All we're, all we're it's talking about is access on the Buffalo on the, on the, on the Mountain my Trail. For tonight, yes. <laughs> and, um, my request for tonight is to be permitted to propose using Buffalo Mountain Trail to get our access and utilities up when we put out our 60 day advance notice so that we have a legitimate access and utility route proposed to the state agency, the local jurisdiction, etc. And if Buffalo Mountain Trail were a regular town road, would we still be going through the same process? Absolutely not. We would be able to use any public right of way. Uh, town trails are dealt with on a town by town basis. Mm -hmm. And some towns treat them as public rights of way. Other towns treat them as something private owned by the town uh, with jurisdiction by the town. There's nothing that I could find in Hardwick that specifically says uh, how Hardwick handles it. So I thought the safest way mm -hmm would be to present it as, hey, we'd like to use this trail as a public right of way. Can we propose using this trail as a public right of way before we get into our advanced 60 day notice? Just sort of an abundance of caution. Yeah. Um. We've always spoken of it as a public right of way. I mean, that's, that's the, the crux of the yeah, so it in fact had been a town highway, a road, until the 50s when it was downgraded to a trail. Yeah. And it primarily was downgraded to a trail because it's so steep that maintenance was difficult and the town didn't want to deal with it, is my understanding. Yeah. Um, and so now primary use is off-road vehicles, well, other than Robert Patton, is off-road vehicles uh, like ATVs in the summer and uh, snowmobiles in the winter. And there's some, there's some pedestrian and bicycle traffic. At least, we believe Pat is more much doing the, doing the, uh, all of the maintenance on it now. Are we doing any maintenance on that road? We're not doing anything. Yeah. We do not. Robert's done it all. And tech it up. He's yeah. kept it up. Technically, according to our ordinance, anyone working on a class four road or trail needs to seek permission of the select board as well. So that might be where, where, where she's, her request is falling under that, perhaps, I don't know. Well, actually it would if you're proposing, right, if part of it is proposing the utility access, that would be burying lines. That definitely, I think, falls under working on the road. But, and that's something that we typically decide, um, you know, at this level and our, in my, tenure on the board, our response has been yes, but you need to work with our road foreman about You just state it as you put back as is. Right, and and that Tom will work with you to verify that that's the case, typically, right? We've done it before. For like, I'm thinking of the um, the pent road that's not a pent road. Mm -hmm. um, Up in Mackle? Yeah. 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 So. We still call it pent road. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Where is it? Um, it's not that bad. I, I just put my hands on this this afternoon, but the um, that's what I handed you here, and I, I apologize to the full board. The uh, policy for Class Four and Trail. It's Section Seven. Mark talks a little bit about this subject matter. Uh, Item Seven. Item Seven. Right of way access. Select board shall control access into the right of way for the installation and repair of utilities and for access of driveways, entrances, and approaches. That's the most pertinent section. It yeah, doesn't necessarily definitely. map out the procedure, but I think that's the most pertinent reference. Right. The thing that I'm interested in is the business of restoring it as you found it, whatever damage your stuff does. One of, one of the most 
frequently published pictures of Hardwick shows a huge chunk of granite on a wagon being pulled by something like 14 animals. It's right down here in the village square. The three-story building in the background is what is now the laundromat. If you look carefully, you will see behind that there is a little two-wheeled cart on which there are axes and ropes and peavies and, and shovels, which the people drawing this I don't know, it's maybe 20 tons worth of granite carried behind them to fix the roads and the bridges that the rock destroyed on its way up the road. And that's sort of what I'm thinking is, that, you know, when your crane is going up and down, I hope it has a little two-wheel cart behind it that has all the stuff that you need to fix the road back to the way it was. Yes, and that can be a condition placed on the on the use of the road as well to, to maintain or to, re to repair it. To its previous condition, or to work with the foreman. Um, yeah, that can be that can be a that can be a town condition. Yeah. Can you speak briefly to your timeline? So you uh, when you go into the uh, for the certificate. So, following following this process um, and permission to use the road, we would put out a 60-day advance notice, most likely within the next few weeks, before I would say the end of November. Um, and then we have to wait the two-month period, the 60-day period, for, for public comment, comment from neighbors, comment from Hardwick, comment from the Agency of Natural Resources, which would touch on environmental impact, among other things. And then following that, we put in the application, and it might be a three-month process to get the Certificate of Public Good. So I would anticipate that we would get the Certificate of Public Good in early to mid-2020, and to construct within the summer to fall of 2020. Nobody freaks out about having a tower. Talk about that. <laughs> Which has happened before. Which has happened before. Yeah. So yes. our, our tower on took a long time to get the Bridgman tower Hill years. was quite contentious. Uh, yeah. But, but so I mean, I, I guess what I would say to that is that the process for um, for expressing your concerns about the tower is the. Certificate of Public Good process. It is. There's a pre-application process as built into that. It's a, it's a statewide process. So that is the advanced 60-day notice. And within that period of time, all of the adjacent property owners are notified. So anybody touching the property on any side gets notice with a copy of the drawings and a proposal with my contact information. Um, and they are allowed at that point um, and invited to make comment um, and give opinions. Uh, at that time, the town can uh, become an interested party if the town so desires, and, the, and that's when the agency also has uh, room to comment on environmental impact and to request certain review. For instance, if there's a flora or a fauna that's protected, um, then that's a 60-day period of time where neighbors can say, hey, this is what we feel about this, um, and other stakeholders, essentially, will be able to give their opinion. That is the pre-application process to the CPG. So that 60-day advance notice is not the application, it's the pre-application. That before we're putting an application into the Public Utility Commission, we're finding out who wants to weigh in on this project. So this is where we get to make kind of a hard decision, and then down the road we get to make comments. It sounds like pretty much is what we get. So it seems like we should think about this beyond tonight, in my opinion. Our limbs are more more towers better. I'm sorry. Well, it ain't that. Ever since we switched to low band on the fire department side because of Canada and everything else, we've gone to low band. Our radios for fire department they just went and suck. Hmm. And we cannot rely on them at all. Hmm. Uh, it's hard 
started to, uh, to talk to a dispatch anywhere in the village and everything. And we're actually way up in Greensboro for our tower. Your and, tower is uh, in Greensboro? Yeah, it's at the Greensboro Firehouse. It's a repeater up there. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I think rescue, I think they ended up spending well, close to $75,000, I think, for their radios. Because they got an antenna up there, and then they got one up here, up on top of West Hill. And the tower on Bridgman Hill doesn't have the we're actually, mandate to... I think we're almost higher in Greensboro than that tower is there. Where right. we are. It's just well, I think the they're going to charge. They're going to charge a whole bunch for us to be on the tower here. I think if I remember right. At um, Bridgman. Yes, I think I, my memory from years ago. When I was well, that's we were going to be down lower uh, oh, because AT and T's up here, mm -hmm. and then you got the rest of everybody down around, and then oh. you're down a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. So by the time your antenna gets up on that tower that it was up there, we were higher up it's in Greensboro. Right. It just that most of the time, if we need to contact anybody, we're using our own phones to do it. I mean, I'm constantly on the phone with Lamoille talking with them instead of trying to use radios. Hmm. Will there be anything for you in this tower? I don't know. It would be something, you know, to look at. I mean, since it's right there in the village, it would probably cover us better, you know, fire department-wise around the village area. Mm -hmm. hmm. Hmm. But you have cell coverage in the village now? Uh, but, not radio, but not radio coverage. Oh, right. okay, so both sketchy. Oh, yeah. I mean, I can be up on West, West Hill. And we can be standing up there and we can look at the tower up there and we won't have any service. <laughs> can, can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Just about the, the um, Gene, I'm sure I'm changing your information, so I'm glad you can make it. Um, do you have, I'm just curious with uh, other installations like this, do, does the town have an opportunity to work with AT&T about uh, some level of maintenance moving forward? I mean, is that something you guys would consider offering? Maintenance of the public trail. To address the Wes's points about, you know, if it gets right up and you guys doing your maintenance activities, you know, we have some condition you know, to keep moving forward. Is that something we could explore? We could definitely explore that, yeah. Sure. Okay. I'm just curious. Shame that Danny's not here because he would have something like to say. He would have he, yeah, he could offer uh, some some yeah. pertinent content comments. Um, yeah. I'm having a hard time just envisioning. But I mean, this is sort of an aside, I guess. But I'm having a hard time envisioning how the a tower on Buffalo provides any different cover coverage than the tower on Bridgman. <coughs> goes further uh, south? Part of it is because of the complicated terrain. Um, we don't have complete line of sight. Another part of it is capacity. Or, or, okay, yeah, so, so part of it is line of sight and part of it is capacity. So the system gets overwhelmed with a certain number of users on the tower and that's why sometimes the coverage is so sketchy even though you can actually see line of sight to the antennas. That has some less to do with the tower than the equipment on the tower. Well, it's, it's both. Yeah. There's only so much you can do with one tower. Hmm. So what were you looking for of, from us today, tonight? When you walked in, what were you hoping you would walk out with? Permission to propose to the Public Utility Commission and to the town of Hardwick. Uh, use of the town trail as a public right of way to bring our utilities and access up so that we can put the advance notice in and start the pre-application process. How much would it set you back if we took what's November it, two 7th. Weeks, until November 7th to make a decision? The number of weeks that it would be from now to then. Yeah. Yeah. I, the other thing that's um, that's just niggling in the back of my mind is the idea. So um, I think that part of our discussions um, with Mr. Patton over the years stem from um, maintenance of the trail. The trail and whether and what kind of development we should have on a town trail that we don't maintain 
and and there's there's some tension around developing, you know, encouraging any kind of development on a class four road or a trail that's not maintained, and then people are coming to the town with complaints about various things on the trail, and, the, and they're, because they're trying to use it as primary access to their business or their home or something like this. It seems to me that um, adding utilities along that it potentially encourages more development on the town trail, and just as something that I'm thinking about as we're talking this through. Um, that is not a road that, that is, is, um, is this not like some of the other roads where they could be turned into a decent road, like that road is like straight up, there is a yeah. stream on the cliff on the other side. Yeah. I mean, it's it's it could with a lot of effort, but you know. It's we don't easy, want it back easy. as a class three road. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. we, we're not yeah. looking forward to that, yeah. Right, even though it really is right now in pretty good condition right up to Robert Patton's because he's put a lot of time and effort into it. Mm -hmm. um, it's, and you know, we do maintain some steep roads in town, Tom's crew does, mm -hmm. that we wish we didn't. Maintain. <laughs> <laughs> so, farm road. <laughs> yeah, but we don't really want to be in the business of taking on more roads that are right. actually too steep. As you know, we wouldn't want to look at this and think about upgrading that that road back to a the trail back to a road. I don't think. Right. I mean, you won't have to, right? I know. You know, and say no. This is the way it's going to stay. This is the way it's yeah. right. And I suppose also the way to control development is really through adherence to our zoning ordinances yeah. and bylaws. Mm -hmm. Which is but if this doesn't go through our zoning ordinances and bylaws, this particular thing, then we don't have recourse. Is that no, I was thinking good? more about like Later my on. earlier comment that running utilities encourages more development, but really you should be, we should be controlling that through our um, zoning. Um, administration mm -hmm. right so if it's not appropriate to have a house on a class four road or trail or then that's the point at which you deal with that well it sounds like we're not nixing the project or anything by putting it off two weeks we're just making sure that we have our brains wrapped around this thing and we've had a chance to you know take time to actually look at this thing and read it and with our you know, the correct glasses mm -hmm. on or whatever. <laughs> yeah, but and the other point too is uh, we do want to give uh, the town's attorney the opportunity to offer some input. I mean, this is always yeah, a pretty I mean, important legal issue, so we want to make sure we get our input from the town's attorney as well. Yeah, yeah, I think that just makes sense to me. So we push you to the. And we'll probably come up with more questions. We're going to push you to the seventh. November seventh. Yeah. Yep. Same time, same place. Same channel. Same channel. Same channel. <laughs> HCTV. Same cast of characters. Maybe if you want. Maybe an addition. Yeah, there so, may, yeah. Be, may be another one. All right. And by that in point. In the meantime, I yes. am available to answer questions. Great. And we you have your contacts. contact. Info. And we have your email address in the uh, printout of the, yeah. of the correspondence with oh, right. you and, and Kristen. Or you and you and Casey and Sean. Yeah. Yes. Great. Okay. I'm sorry we're not more uh, decisive tonight. That's but. okay. Is there any are there any other questions that you like need to answer now while I'm here? What's the life expectancy of one of these towers? And are you likely to replace it when it's dead? The lease is for 30 years, and it is expected to last 30 years. And when it's dead, uh, they're obsolete. Obsolete. Yeah. Generally, generally, it would. It depends on the lease terms, and we haven't fully come to. You know, it's it, it's all dependent on the lease terms, and we haven't fully negotiated the lease. But generally, we're moved to a foot below grade. Um, something along those lines. So what, we're, what we are theoretically looking at is regular use of that trail to monitor and maintain this for the next 30 years. Regular being like monthly. Yeah, maybe. that's correct. I would, I would, I would project it. At the, uh, yes, I would say assume it's going to be there for the 30-year lease term. Yeah. Yeah. Although we're all not to remember that 30 years this technology is going to be so, so antiquated. So <laughs>
<laughs> Seriously, I mean, 30 years is a long time. But at the same time, it goes by very quickly. So, and there are towers that were built in the early 90s that are still up and running. So, there's a lot. There is unpredictability about what the technology is going to do, um, and these are built to standards, current structural standards, and expected to last at least the 30 years. And as far as use of the trail goes. From a leasing standpoint, it should be anticipated that it would last the life of the lease. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Right, thanks. Yeah. Oh, one other question while you're here. So, um, am I right in thinking, in contrast to Rinker's Tower on Bridgman Hill, this is going to be an AT&T tower, so it maybe it's not a tower where they're leasing space to a lot of other providers or is that a possibility that leasing space to whoever, I mean not just whoever, right. but other people who are also in radio communications? Very good chance of leasing space. Okay. It is designed to be co-locatable okay. and we would likely, it would, it would likely support an additional three carriers. Um, that's generally what is expected. So. You might have just AT and T on there at first, but it's likely that other carriers would come come along later. And then, where on the totem pole, as it were, would the emergency services sit? Would they be? Do you, do you happen to know that detail? Sure. It depends. First, it's usually first come, first serve. So uh, it's first in time, first in right, like most real estate. Um, so if fire department comes right after AT and T gets installed or or before and wants and wants to put their proposed emergency service antennas on the tower as part of the proposal, then they would likely be second in time, so directly below AT&T. How's this tie back in with the, uh, I'm sorry, I lost the phrase, but what was the phrase you mentioned that federally were obligated to improve communications for emergency response services? Well, that's, what, that's first net. Yeah, so, so you said this is first net, but I'm confused now by your statement about, well, the fire department now has to come and apply for it. How does that tie back to the first net mm -hmm. concept? Yep. Mm -hmm. So, so first net is a federal mandate that, that tells the states that they have to have emergency services available in rural areas. And traditionally, there's been a lack of this because AT&T, Verizon, they don't necessarily want to go into rural communities because they might have 100 customers or 20 customers, and it doesn't make commercial sense to bring the, the facility to this rural community. And as a result, emergency services and people suffer because there's no, there's no access. So FirstNet, in, it's a congressional mandate, and says, look, statewide, nationwide, you have to make these emergency services available. Cell phone for, services. Yeah, yeah. To, to everybody. And it doesn't matter if, if it's going to make you money or not. People are suffering. And so Vermont adopted, Vermont's governor adopted FirstNet. Um, so each state was given the opportunity to either adopt FirstNet or to create their own alternative to FirstNet. And every single state adopted FirstNet. So uh, coming back to your question, Sean, um, individual personnel have to apply for it and also subscribe to it, but it has to be available to them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I understand that. Yeah. Available at a fee. Uh, yes, there is a fee. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There is. I see. Yeah. Okay. I understand. Does that one? He already has. When I start dialing on my phone, it basically mm -hmm. says I, I have priority. Your priority on you or anybody else. So, so I will get to. Okay. Oh. Hide me in time. Hide me in time. His call scan. For our radio services. Okay. Where, you know, if we want to put an antenna up there, that's okay. something totally different. So it's through a, the cell network. Yeah. Right. I see. Like so, so you were saying that before. when you were talking about that they would be the second one down, you weren't talking about first net. You were talking about if they want to put a, like a radio yeah, repeater yeah, there or something. Well, well, first for example. is just a mandate that says this local. And that's on your AT&T, that's your AT&T antenna yeah. that's going to be at the top of the tower. Yeah, AT&T right? AT will yeah. get the first spot because they're owning the tower or they're the applicant of the tower. They actually could sell the tower to another built suit firm. No, but what I'm distinguishing is that there's, there's AT&T and FirstNet are the same 
at and is like providing the first net service on their at and portion of the tower? No. 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 Um, at and has their own antennas, and as part of their contract, they, they, they won the, the RFP or the bid in order to build the network nationwide. And so they get the top spot for commercial purposes, but they have to offer to emergency services uh, the opportunity to be on that tower. And if Verizon were to come first, then they might have the second spot. But if if the emergency services were to come first, then they would have the first spot. So first they have to actually contract with you for a place yes. on the tower? The, the, the local, the local um, fire department service. has to contract with you for a place on the tower for the first net. So it's not just a given. That's correct, yeah. yes. It has mm -hmm. to be available. Okay, yeah. so that might not be super great if it doesn't get jumped on right away. If it's like a real low part on the tower, like up here. So yeah, so yeah. what we're what we're doing pretty routinely is um, proposing emergency services on the on the tower. Just saying, future emergency services proposed on the tower if there is an interest in the local community, which most of the time there has been, or a lot of the time. And so if we already have it off of this tower, it may not be, it may not make sense for us to also have it on the side. Oh, it tower. would make sense. It yeah, you want, what I'm hearing is that it's not reliable completely, mm -hmm. and the more towers, the better when it comes to emergency services, because we might be below the tree line, we might be at capacity, there's any number of reasons that one tower isn't going to completely meet all the emergency services needs. If there was a big emergency too, then you can almost guarantee that the facilities would be overwhelmed. Um, and actually, that did happen in 9-11, and that's kind of what spurred this whole... I thought that was the point of first thing. Was exactly. That, was that, that, he, that the first responders can talk when, and it shuts other people down instead, right? Yes, right, exactly. And so when you have a big emergency, um, when the network is going to be overwhelmed, then it's better to have more, more towers. Doug, you have a question? Yes, I'm with the newspaper here. Um, you had mentioned two things here. You mentioned there's a capacity situation with Richmond Hill, mm -hmm. and you also mentioned a 5G component with this new tower. Mm -hmm. Now, my question is that if this new tower is not put in place, does that affect Harvick's position in terms of being shuffled and when 5G becomes a part of an offering that AT&T would have to the area? In other words, if Richmond Hill is our only tower, mm -hmm. does that mean that we would be, have less priority for 5G than if we had two towers in town? Um, the, the more towers, the more capacity, the more opportunity for uh, devices, or right. just overall. So yes, the more towers, the more uh, customers that can be served, whether that's emergency or commercial. Okay, so it would increase priority, in other words, to have a second tower. In terms of like, the, I assume there's a list of priorities that AT&T has of which towns will we'll get 5G first, just like any other utility. Um, and no, I think they've already service. been working, they, they had a crime up here on the hill, they've been working toward 5G up here, because I think we've been notified that we're going to have to switch over our, uh, all that new software that we got for when Brid Bridgman stuff, you know, for, for our water alerts and stuff, oh, yeah. we're going to have to update that because it's 5, 5G. Yeah, so it is common, and I, this probably touches on your question, but it, it, it seems relevant, um, that it is common for a carrier to upgrade their antennas to the new network, or like the new right. technology. So yeah, that we, uh, it, I don't know if AT&T has um, proposed to uh, upgrade their antennas at right. Richmond Hill. I don't know that, but they certainly can, and that's something that they do routinely is upgrade their antennas. So they can build a new tower with a new technology, and then they can also upgrade their antennas on old towers. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to wait for minutes. Yeah. 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 Do some homework. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. And yeah. I look forward to seeing you on the seven. Great. In the meantime, um, if there are questions, then you have my contact information. Yeah. I'd be happy to talk with you more. Great. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Um, all right, so next is item number four, which is add no request, which I am I'm going to take a stab at East Hardwick Neighborhood Organization. Correct. Is that correct? Otherwise known as A, no. Um, to, they're requesting use of sidewalk location in the area of future library, future library, former, right? 
Oh, to, trying to, be, to re up it. Re up it. It's the old, uh, water, it's the old East Hardwick Fire District building. Yeah. It's the old office. They're trying Former. to turn it into a library. It wasn't a library in the past. So. Oh, it wasn't? Apparently. Yeah, it, was. it, yeah, it had it been was. used as was. one, but yeah, it's it the water district, fire and water district building, no? Right. The fire was downstairs, and I think the library was upstairs. Right. Huh. Cheryl Michaels reached out to me this afternoon and just asked if I could, she couldn't attend tonight because she's at the uh, vaudeville performance actually and she just asked if I could read back a statement which yeah. I just got here. I put it in their package. Oh, excellent! Thank you, Casey. <laughs> um, the 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 main point here is uh, you want me to just continue, Eric? On yeah, this carry on. Asked. Okay, so um, it's a tight it's tight on the property boundaries, and they're talking about doing some improvements to secure the building coming into this winter season. So they have a contractor lined up, and the specific request here is. Uh, just if I can read this quickly, uh, East Hardwick Neighborhood Organization has received donations to uh, secure, it is library and firehouse building uh, in the village at 111 Main. They're going to crib the foundation, put on a new roof, fix some broken windows in the next couple weeks. Uh, again, to uh, keep ahead of it coming into the winter season. Mm -hmm. uh, the building is owned by the East Hardwick Fire District. And it sits on a small piece of land. Uh, there's some land in the front of the building. Um, and they have been working with the neighbors, uh, you know, in regards to the upcoming project. So in order to crib the foundation, we need to bring all railroad ties, steel beams, and other supports into the basement, which is accessed from the driveway of a neighbor's property. And um, there's limited room. The key point is this. There's limited room in the driveway to uh, you, you know, have supplies that they're going to need for the project, which is going to run a limited amount of time, uh, no more than a week. They're saying a couple days here. But what they're asking of the select board is uh, we'd have to use, uh, uh, put a truck um, and perhaps a trailer um, on the sidewalk area in order to bring in the ties and beams. The truck would be there only while the crew is working. We expect this will take one to two days. The work being done by uh, Jeff Montgomery Construction, uh, East Hardwick, a licensed contractor, has insurances in place. So what they're specifically asking is, uh, would the select board allow for the contractor to effectively stage and use that little sidewalk space out front on the Main Street side of the building? That's the ask. Are we going to hear from people in East Hardwick that we're blocking the sidewalk? We hear a lot about the sidewalk. I think they're in pretty good conversation with all of the neighbors and everybody yeah. knows that this little project is going on. and. Yeah, it's it's like pretty week. exciting that they're actually going to save it because I think I don't know that it would have made it through another winter. And they were able to raise the fifteen hundred dollars needed in something like a week to stabilize it. To stabilize, to stabilize it. So you know, I, I, would, I can't imagine that anybody's going to complain. And. Right. How long was that rig sitting in front of the village diner or just off to the side of the village diner <laughs> completely so occupying the sidewalk on a major state highway? But it was only during the business hours when people would be using it. At night it wasn't that there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just, do you want a motion to approve that they do this yeah. project they have up to a week? Because they think they need a couple of days, but... Yeah. Them, yeah, just be careful. Sometimes the weather can mess you up on yeah. that hard day. Give them two weeks. Give them two weeks right. to get it done and, and clear things up. No? Do you see any problem with that, Tom? Okay. So you, you made, are you smell. making a motion? I'm seconding it. Yeah, I made that motion. And you made that motion. Did Casey, you, you got that slippery motion? <laughs> Was moving a little bit. Their vague, the two week time frame. Yeah. Using, Use the sidewalk. Using the sidewalk. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we frame it, you know, when, from the time they start, because I don't know actually what their start date is. That might right. give them a good window. That's yeah. Is that, is that understood? Well, yeah. 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 Okay. That's understood. That okay. Thank you. Yeah. We don't know when it Sorry. is. I'm not a member really of the tonight. group, but I'm speaking on behalf of the group. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other discussion on that? Hmm. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next is Casey to present quarter one financials for fiscal year 2020. We're already through first quarter. Mm -hmm. I'm flies when you're having fun. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, to warm up the machine. Yeah. 
So is there, well, while that's warming up, it, it did say future, is there's a, not only to save this building, is there an idea to, to use it for some yeah, library like, no, function? Space. That's that's a community, community space. Community space, oh, yeah. okay, yeah. They're anticipating sort of a run-it-yourself little library. They're not anticipating, mm -hmm. as far as I know, they're not anticipating hiring a professional. Um, but they want to have it as a community space, a meeting space, um, and just save a little building yeah. in the village. It's a That's cute a good building. Idea. Yeah, it's a little. Well, it could be used as a little. A little tiny. It's like the size of a room, really. It's like this. Yeah. I mean, compared it's to like the, 20 by 20. It's like a car width or something. <laughs> right. Well, they must have parked a fire rig in there at some point. No, they, car, they did. They parked a fire cart. It's now up at the depot. And oh, car, 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 horse car. car. I see a okay. horse car. Horse car, right. Back in the day. Well, it was horse drawn, but then it was it was upgraded for a truck. A truck, and they had a jeep. Somebody had a jeep that they would ha attach this hose cart to, and take it to the fire, and attach it to the fire hydrant, and mm -hmm. that was their fire department. Mm -hmm. uh, and they had four different nozzles, depending on. I mean, it was. It was as good as you could get with what they had to work with. High technology. Right. <laughs> All right. So now we're looking at. All right. So the, the first page is revenues. Mm -hmm. um, nothing real exciting. Um, of course, the current property taxes looks huge because everything's been billed and we haven't paid the school yet. So that's why it looks like that. So um, the only thing really kind of. At this point, everything should sort of be at 25%. Um, I will note recording fees are at 46% um, right here. And of course, at the time we did our budget, we didn't know that the recording fee per page was going from 10 to $15. So it's an additional five dollars oh, wow. a page. Fifty percent. Yeah. So already, you hmm. know, one quarter in, we're about halfway. Fifty percent over. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So we're in so. same on zoning, if I'm looking at that right. Zoning permits. Yeah. I mean, smaller dollar amount, but also fifty percent. Right. 50%. But yeah. Huh. So um, interesting. That's that's about it. We're on. light on dog licenses, aren't we? Um, yeah, but he's gonna. Yeah, he's been out. Well. Dog licenses is because that is in what, April, so yeah. we won't. Yeah. And oh, so yeah, I mean, no. those are they're not due until I think April. Right, first. right. So okay. yeah, we haven't really got anything. Got it. Um, and that's about it there. Um, but the words affect that. But there's not that many. Right. There. So that's kind of the. Yep. And then there isn't really much um, other revenues. Um, so interest on investments. Um, when we budget this year. I will be budgeting significantly higher. Um, I don't even know, like, in the past it's only been about $500. It should be a lot more because we have that CD and union um, that we share with the library. And then, hmm. of course, we have our regular money market account that earns a fair amount. So this is certainly um, way too low. Hmm. So we're, that's going to be high, high. So um, water and sewer transfers are just normal stuff. Then we get into, now we're into expenses. Um, so I have just a few notes here, a few highlights. Um, all right, so a couple that were, that looked high. Um, this 100% here is that's all the supplies to do our tax billing. So that's, that's completely normal. Those things won't need to be purchased again this year. Um, what else was my other? So we're really only for over but forty-one bucks, which is yeah, what, point four percent yeah, over. Yeah, it's really small. But the total in the end comes to twenty-four for that department. Correct. That right? Well, for all of this off, this is all of office. Yeah. Um, and then like yeah. lister supplies, for instance, shows sixty-three percent. Well, they had to get a bunch of cartridges and things to start the year, so that's it's perfectly mm -hmm. fine. But overall, the the department is at twenty-four percent there. Right on target. Um, other payroll. A lot of that we haven't paid out yet this year because it's paid out twice a year. Um, building expenses, um, nothing too significant. I mean, we had to, the Memorial Building elevators is 75 percent because we have to pay our annual support fee right off in the beginning of the year, and that's like a thousand bucks. Let's see what I have for notes. 
Um, Memorial Building Repairs and Maintenance is at 37%. We just spent some money to repair a bunch of broken windows that was a necessity. So nothing too exciting there. We did fix um, that is exciting. Well, yeah. the electrical fixture. We fixed the overhead lights in the town clerk's office. So those are a All lot LED. better. We, um, we are right now uh, troubleshooting um, on some alarm systems. So that's something coming at us. Uh, you know, we're trying to take care of uh, some, you know, do the preventative maintenance things, you know, just to keep things up the snuff. It would be interesting to see if there's any change in the heating costs now that those windows aren't leaking. I said the same thing. I was like, you know, I just wonder if we're going to notice in our office even right. like the cold air coming through and because right. we have the storm windows down plus the cracks are all gone. I mean, in Amanda's office alone, there were probably 10 broken windows. Yeah, like 10, 10 individual, individual So they windows. all got fixed? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Except for the records room, which yeah. we discovered. We thought yeah. about that earlier tonight. Yeah. So, um, so police no department um, overall is at like 20%. So they're they're on target. Okay. Um, fire department um, has started purchasing some equipment, but overall 21%. Um, highway, so the gravel is at 85%, but that's because that was all purchased this summer and used, yeah, so yeah. there'll be a little bit more before, but, I mean, then we'll be going into next fiscal year, right? Mm -hmm. You got a lot more to buy? No. No? So, okay. So no, that's some gravel for the Right. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. went yeah. up on that last year because he said that we were, uh, he was anticipating that uh, the, uh, the overall cost was going to go up and it stayed the same this year. Really? What about the that's good. What about the ditch stone? Okay, that's here. Um, so it's way over. Um, we are getting back several thousand dollars in a grant. Um, right. The Better Back Roads grant for Hardwick Farms. So we bill it all to that, but we'll have grant income to supplement to that. offset some of that. Um, the contract mowing is 82, but that's done. That's done for yeah. the year. We won't have more expense there. Um, what else is in then we get into like the rest of the highway department and the stuff that you see is 100% is because equipment repair and expense, we just do the combined 70000 but when I actually book the expense, I book it to the particular truck or whatever so we can actually track what vehicle is you know, costing money or whatnot. So um, they're at 24%, so on target. And then we get into like appropriations. Not everybody's hey, requested school. their yeah, money. Right. Um, line items. County taxes are paid. It yep, like county taxes are paid, and they were slightly less than we budgeted yeah, for. Yeah, close. Very close, 93%. And then um, what else? Line items. Line items are at 26%, so right there. So our tax sale expense is more than we anticipated because of the properties we had to buy back in August. Yeah. Um, and then we get into, so recreation um, is at um, 13%. They have some they have some maintenance stuff like permitting for the playground and such that, um, and I've, I've spoken to Suzanne, and so they're basically going to just offset with her salary. She'll, you know, what they budget for her salary, she'll work less hours to compensate that they went over in maintenance so that they don't go over the total budget in the end. And trails is on target. They're at 20%. So overall, total expenditures 24.34%. Ideally, we're a quarter of the way through, so we should be at about 25%. So first quarter, doing okay. Yep. Any our questions? Okay. Yep. That's good. It shows that our budget was close. Mm -hmm. um, our auditors are coming to do the audit next week. They will be here all week. I always feel like the auditors are either they're coming or they're here they're or here. we're getting their report and we're talking about it and then they're coming and they feel like yeah. they're there's never going. Yeah. Right. So they are, they're coming on Monday. They'll be here all week working well, If we feel like that, actually. you definitely feel like that. Yeah, right. <laughs> So, okay. Any Great. Um, just Any for, for just a comment there too. We we're waiting for them to review so we get the official closeout for the previous fiscal year. Yeah. Right. So that's just, we're just not in a position. Yeah, to that because yet. it was my first full year. I really wanted to have them kind of take a look at things before I before you give us the closeout. Yeah. So. The initial indication is so really close. Is we're, we're really close, close right? Like, yeah, we're from really my close. numbers, we're at like 97 or 98 percent. 
So very close to what we Very, very close, it. yes. Which is and fine. That's yeah. yeah. Where we should be. That's what right. you want to do. Yeah. A little bit yeah. above, a little bit below, something like right. so, near um, your target. That's, that's good. That's the preliminary. <laughs> <and> the <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to buy all that paint, right, Tom? No, it's a truck breaking down. You know, I don't know if you go back and look in there, but you're going to see for old truck where it's been over seven grand. So. Oh, and Mike's too, wasn't it? Um, no. Right. Well, no, no I have the greater. Oh, the greater. Well, the greater. And, well, the bulk of that is uh, tires. And pearly, seventy three hundred. Right. Yeah. 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 So. Big. Um, yeah, so those are big. And yeah. Yeah, and oh, yeah. um, as I'll note here, culverts is another situation with ditch stone. We'll get reimbursed for a bunch of that for the Hardwick Farms grant for the back road for that. I'll just say that that back roads program, I think, was it was really good that we jumped on that early. Oh God, yeah, because uh, I think even after this, I'll still have money left for next spring to use. Because when we first started looking at that, there were a lot of towns who were balking and they were saying, oh my God, the state's going to come in and they're going to mandate all this stuff. And we said, you know what? They're going to mandate it whether we like it or not. Let's join. Well, like Doug said, we're probably one of the few towns that actually jump on it and get it done in the fall. He said, he said he's got a lot of talent that just, no, we don't want to, we'll just we'll put it off to the next year. And, and just, go, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, it, it's just that if I know, if I get a section done, I know what I can work with next spring and still spend that extra money. Right. With them, if they do that one project in the spring or late late summer, day before it goes bye-bye. Right. What are they going to do? The rest right, he didn't use, yeah. yeah. What I was going to say is the work on the Hydric Farms project was completed just before a heavy intensity rain event and the ditch functioned perfectly. I mean, there was no washout. We didn't lose any part of the road. I mean, Tom can attest, it worked really well. We tension bombs were working good, so. Hmm. So it was, it's, right. it's and good. So the nice thing is that a lot of this is stuff that is good for our highway infrastructure to be doing anyway. Yeah. And that that there's a program that allows us to access some funding for it, we gotta do that while we can, while it's yeah, available. We're getting close to 15,000 from all, 15 or 16,000 from them, with right. our contribution of around five grand or so. Right. Who wrote that grant? No, no, this is just something that they are giving to us, or, 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 or each town so is given an allotment of money if they so choose to take it. But we had to first. Not all towns chose to right. Because not all towns will do it. <coughs> so we had to hire a consultant to um, identify all our hydro hydrologically connect connected, connected segments. segments. So we did that early on. And did the grant then pay for that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so it was a lot of work identifying. They're, yeah. they're short segments, right? They're like two uh, hundred. Each segment is two hundred. Two hundred some odd feet. But there are like seventy of them. Oh, there are tons of them. Yeah. Right. I think we've got over three hundred some odd segments. Yeah. Oh, word. Think, something like that. And so, in, to to be able to access this program, you have to have done that work first. Correct. So we jumped on it right away and, right. and said, "Let's get this done because then we can access this funding right. for stuff that the state wants us to do, that we want to do because it improves our roads." Right. And this is part of that Clean Water Act. You know, yeah, any, right. anything between seven and ten percent, or more than ten percent, too, we have to have done within the next five years, and that's what basically we've been concentrating on those. So we have a priority list. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so it's been also been a good way to prioritize projects. And everybody wins. Yeah. Well, absolutely. Everybody who plays. Yeah. Well, I if, think, you, if you're a town that doesn't play, you don't win. But but if you are downstream from us, even if you don't play, no, the that's water true. that's coming at you is better than it would have been if we hadn't played. Right. But for us, particularly like for our right. roads that are steep, it's helpful. Yeah. 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 But it it brings me back to a request that the taxpayers pay a lot of money to run this town. But there's also a lot of outside money that comes ultimately from taxpayers, but there are other taxpayers with a little bit that comes from us. And I think it would be useful in the town report to show total amount spent running this town and how much of it did not come out of the taxpayers' pockets. 
you know, this mm -hmm. this kind of grant. Sean is writing grants. You know, John was writing grants all the time. Aaron writes grants for equipment and stuff like that. All of that is part of the cost of running this town that does not come directly out of the taxpayers' money, taxpayers' pockets here. So for a lot of that stuff, it does show up as a revenue line in our budget. So it is apparent in the town report for a lot of it. If you're used to reading you know those things. If you know how to look for it, it's there. I'm saying like the pie chart where it showed this percentage yeah. Yeah. comes from grants, this percentage comes from Tax. other revenue tax. Yeah, I know yeah. what you're saying. And we have other things too, like the like our Memorial Valley Rail Trail and the Yellow Barn project, where we're uh, accessing a bunch of grant money and private donations and, right. and things that all are, provide an economic impact to the town. That are not. That those are not going to show up on right. because they're, they're not, not part of the budget. It's a total side project. So that's another pie chart, or that's that's another sort yeah. of. Um, yeah, for yep. Just, just so people get an understanding. Lots of us are don't do numbers well. I, I, I say that inclusively. <laughs> so you're thinking it'd be nice to to have a method for communicating that in our next town report. Exactly. We could work on that. Yeah. We do. Such a place we could work. Yeah. 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 yeah that'd be interesting. Great. Thank you, Casey. Yeah. Um, Next is uh, item number six is select board authorization of uh, Vermont Economic Development Authority Form 4A. This is back to the Yellow Barn Project and this is um, Vermont Economic <laughs> Development Authority. Uh, they're the ones that were asking for um, the $2 million loan and that's going to their board next Friday. And this is a form that I think essentially says that this project complies with the town plan and or the town plan that we intend, that we anticipate adopting soon. Yeah, which next week, no? The 6th, November the 6th. November the 6th. Yeah, the 6th. I think is what. That's correct, November 6th. 30 days from the last. Time. That's correct. The longer we're here, the more my contacts dry out and the less I can read stuff that's close up. But so do you need a motion to... Um, it's I'm just red. looking to see, are we signing this or do we want to have a motion for Sean to sign this? And, oh, it's select board yes, that's going to sign just, it. Yeah. Um, so, so we're basically, this, so this is a part of a larger application to EDA and this is basically the town of Hardwick saying um, after study of the proposed project site review of municipal ordinances and applicable land use plans and general study of the effects of the proposed project or industrial park upon the municipality and region in which it is to be located herewith submitted following findings from VITA that the project um, will not violate existing zoning or ordinances land plans and be located in a district, the mixed highway use district, that the project or industrial park is in accord with duly adopted municipal land use plan and that it will involve, um, will, not. will not involve unusual costs to the community. And that it's in that it is in the best interest of the community for the following reasons and is supported by the select board. So basically we're saying we support the project and that it complies with our ordinances and plan and all that as part of the overall application. So do you want a motion to authorize the um, Vermont Economic Development Authority Form 4A? Yes, please. So I move, I move that. Okay, Second. all right. <laughs> Any discussion on the on this application? So it looks like from this application, the uh, the any water and, and sewer costs will be part of the wrapped up in the project cost rather than the town doing that. Yeah, yeah, and then yes, mm -hmm. and there's perhaps an even more complicated answer if you want it, but yes, <laughs> sure, go for it. <laughs> I mean, the other part is that it, it complies. It's oh, it. Um, 
So got, it goes along with our town plan as it's written. Yeah. Well, that's part of this, but the other part is if the there are any, any unusual costs. And so that's right. that's what we're saying. So yeah. I think the context here, my, my opinion on that, Lucian, is the context is we uh, we know we're going to have to extend the water and the wastewater service. We we already know that it's not like we have to build a wastewater treatment facility to house you know to receive the wastewater. So it's not unusual. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's kind of how I've been thinking about this. But it's going to be a new water and sewer connection. It's a new connection that we would handle in we the same way that. that we would right. do a new water and sewer connection. So there's a second part to this, and that is uh, with uh, with the tenants that are going to be coming in. They're going to have to apply to the town uh, for their water Discharge. and their wastewater. So we're going to go through that process, and there's going to be a pertinent connection fee paid to the town for that capacity. And if they're okay. if, if they're big enough, Maybe. waste users, then we're also going to have the state department of something potentially weigh in. I think waste, it's wastewater they, management division. If they if it's predicted that they'll exceed. That their total flow exceeds five percent of the capacity of the plant, then um, they have to have a plan that the state approves to, and then they might have to a business going in might have to do some mitigation, like they might have to have like a holding tank. So instead of getting a big bolus all at once, the sewer plant it trickles in over a longer period of time or something. Oh, okay. So like so, what this is saying is that they would bear that cost, and it's not the well. This isn't too. saying that generally, but that is right. Correct. That's the plan. I think it's important to note that um, this this thing, uh, the pretreatment discussion, and depending on what tenant comes in, has been talked about up to this point with James Cole, and he's actually had these conversations with the prospective tenants, so they're informed. You know, they know this is going to be a cost you're going to have to bear coming in. So oh, okay. Yeah. It's not going to be a surprise. Is the point? Right. All right. More discussion. All in favor of, um, of uh, signing off on PETA Form 4A, please say aye. 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 And opposed. Motion carries. You have one that we're. Yeah, I, okay, um, I, I did. I run out. a strike through and unfortunately it didn't show up because it was a red strike through, so I just did it by hand here. So this is one we'll consider official. Okay. And it's the strikeout, so the pertinent statement, if it's an is or is not, or uh, is properly identified on this one, Eric. Okay, great. Oh, These minutes. Those are for you, Eric. Oh, minutes, yay. Uh, where are we? Uh, select board reports. Sure, um, the This is the first year that all vaudeville shows, and they started tonight, are pre-sold out. Oh my. So, so if you don't have a time, ticket, <laughs> look for the scalpers. Ticket, go on Front Porch Forum and hope that somebody needs to sell one. Or go to the, they're serving food. At the but they have the uh, gyros or whatever. Yeah. I don't remember the guy's name, but there's a food truck up there. You can go up there before the show. You don't have to be going to the show if you want to go and have something that's Are we gonna not have scalping otherwise available. Yeah, that's what I was no, thinking. No, yeah. But it's exciting here. because they, you know, they, they often sell out one or two of the nights, but right. this when they sold all all shows out. So that's pretty exciting for them and for the townhouse. Um, and then uh, I've heard from the community foundation that they have decided that they won't be using Hardwick Townhouse for their uh, annual meeting this year, their, their grant meeting, because they were in Hardwick two years ago, so maybe next year. They're spreading love around yeah. the state. And, uh, which is okay, because we were talking about trying to extend the season in order to accommodate them, and now so maybe by next year we'll be better prepared for that. Um, but there is, after vaudeville this weekend, there's a, a benefit for the REACH program that Rusty mm -hmm. Dewey's show. Oh yeah, um, I saw that. It's that. the first weekend of November, but I don't remember Second. which day. Uh, I don't know. It's November 1st here. Is it? Oh. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, a, little thing that it's, a, it's a Friday night, okay. So, but after that, then the townhouse will uh, essentially close down for the season until but that'll be a, that'll be a much softer process with the uh, with station. the glycol, glycol yeah. yeah. Yeah, it'll be much easier. So you do have to drain all the the bathrooms. Yeah, the bathrooms. Yeah. But still, that's yeah. Yes, yeah. less of a process. It's going to be better. Yeah. So 
so that's awesome. what's happening at the townhouse. And then Still Sean reported on our um, pedestrian and traffic safety um, right. task force information. So we have so, that. Uh, we got I'm not that the covered. spokesman for the group, to be clear. <laughs> <laughs> we got that covered. We're working on that. And um, that's all I got. I don't have any solid waste district news. Can you report on painting on that? <clears throat> the painting of the <clears throat> depot. depot is done. 99.9%. There is one little edging that the painter failed to notice, and he will take care of it. Um, we, the Historical Society, will be open for walk in traffic for one more week, and after that, it will be by appointment only. Uh, I want to thank the community for the wonderful response we got for the um, coin drop. Uh, last Saturday, the thing that stands out, stood out to all of us as we were counting the money, was how many $20 bills people dropped wow. in the bucket. Wow. And I just take that as a wonderful pat on the back that what we're doing is, is meeting the approval of the community, and that's perfect. Thank you. Hey. Any other select board reports? Uh, any new business? Yeah. Yeah, I forgot to remind everybody to vote for uh, Chief Cochran for the <laughs> <laughs> <Just a pig. laughs> for Judevine Library fundraiser. And they can vote through uh, October 25th. Is that right? 25 sounds right. At the, either at the library or at the Galaxy bookstore. Oh, okay, you can vote Galaxy too. We can go to awesome. Galaxy too. So <laughs> early and vote often, right? Yes. For Chief Cochran. Yes. It's the one situation where you can vote as many times as you want. It's pretty fun. You can vote for everybody multiple times. But vote for Chief Cochran. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's in the running. I think it's on front porch for him. Oh, no, was there a posting? Of, I think there was, yeah. Uh, How's Sean doing? I don't remember. Yeah. Sean who? <laughs> <laughs> but it's a thing for that. All right. <laughs> Uh, it's for a great cause in all seriousness, so yeah. folks, throw your votes in there. It's, yeah. it's for a good cause. Oh, geez, I'm old business. I still haven't. Jody Lou Smith came and requested a letter of support from Chair of the Select Board that I still need to write. I'm just letting you know that I'm remiss in my case, so <laughs> now everyone knows. Uh, um, Eric screwed up. Yeah. Uh, all right. Anything else? Adjourn. Thank you all. Appreciate it. You think this is funny? Right.